we have a, a, a very interesting presentation on smart IoT software and hardware working together for the smart building. I'd like to introduce Tobias Enders, the CEO of GMS, that's Global Media Services. And before starting GMS, Tobias was responsible for the business development for that company, and his passion is technology in a modern workplace, creating a coherent overall concept in line with architecture. To achieve this goal, he prefers the build, the plan, build, operate model, and GMS is a full service systems integrator with a focus on AV and smart building technology, as well as a member of the GPA, you know, which is this international group working together. They are the GPA member for Germany and Austria. Tobias, please join us. Hello everyone, welcome to my presentation today. During the last hours we heard a lot about smart buildings, why we need smart buildings, and what can be achieved with smart buildings. I will also touch a little bit on the why and on the what, but especially on the how. How to implement a smart building. Smart IoT software and hardware together establish truly intelligent buildings. That's the title of my presentation. So therefore, I represent the role of the system integrator today here. Yeah, my name is Tobias Enders. I run a company called GMS based in Germany. And I serve as a member of the board of GPA, our global alliance. While the roots of our company were in AV, we have developed our company into a smart building system integrator during the last couple of years, following a plan, build, and operate approach. So let's first start with the why and what are the drivers of a smart building. From what we see in the various projects that we do for our customers, we see three key areas here. The first area is energy efficiency. Everyone wants to operate his building energy efficient. And it's even more relevant in the context of ESG. The second area is space optimization. Of course, with the return to the office after COVID, Everyone is crazy about capacity planning. How much space do we really need in the future? People are still in the home office, and no one really knows how to answer these questions. And this is where technology can help. So that's the main driver today, space optimization. And the third aspect is workspace experience. Workspace experience, from my perspective, is the most relevant part here from the long run. And therefore, it's a key focus for my company to focus on workspace experience. We need to build attractive spaces, attractive offices to beat the appetite of people coming back to the office. So we need to be even more attractive compared to the home office situation. And this is where workspace experience comes into play and where our customers are willing to invest in two technologies in a smart building context. And we see three types of customers that we usually deal with. The first are the real estate development companies. So these guys, they build new properties. And of course, the main objective, the main goal for them is to have a very highly attractive product in the real estate market. It has to be attractive on one side for new tenants moving into the buildings, but even more important when it comes to the sale of the, of the development of the properties to the investors. The second group are asset managers. Asset managers usually have a large portfolio of real estate. And they want to understand and create a benchmark what's going on in the buildings. And 
Their objective is, of course, to increase the value of their portfolio, but on the other side, to keep the tenants happy in the long run in the buildings. And the third group are the corporate real estate managers. These guys are in demand for the workspace experience. And therefore, this is our most critical customer group here. They want to invest in two technology to win the war of talent and to focus to build a fancy and nice office um, environment for their, for their employees. What we saw during the last decade were a couple of really fancy smart building projects. A huge complexity, a ton of overwhelming use cases, and of course, um, high budgets were allocated to these landmark buildings. I would say the Edge in Amsterdam is still one of the most iconic buildings that is well known when it comes to this asset group. But over the last couple of years, we saw more and more buildings with smart features going live in the market. The Cube in Berlin is one example that is right now perceived as one of the smartest buildings in Europe. But there are many others in the completion stage or already live. Hammer Brooklyn, 22 Bishop's Gate, The Oval, and others. These are just a few names. But what does it mean for us? We think that smart buildings are no longer a nice to have. Tenants in the buildings are in demand of this digital experience. They expect this digital experience, and therefore, smart buildings are a must have in the future. And the focus of the discussion is heavily around new builds. But if we think about the real estate market as such, new builds are just the exception. The vast majority of the market are retrofits, and they need smart upgrades. And we also heard during the panel discussion this morning that it's not an easy task. You need to have dedicated technology for this, and of course, a certain skill set when it comes to the system integration of this technology into the retrofit situations. And if we think about how can we now do our smart building, what are the next steps? And a warning, we need to be cautious here. We will start researching the market, and we will find hundreds, if not thousands, of fancy sensors in the market. And maybe some of you guys will join the IoT um, fair, and I bet that you will find lots of these sensors. And what you will find out is, of course, they will all offer you a API. But what they usually also do is they offer a cloud portal, and potentially they offer a, service, um, a software as a service subscription model on top of this cloud portal, and potentially an app. And if you start integrating one-to-one -one APIs in your smart building context, you will end up with a very high complexity that we think is not really sustainable and scalable if you think about a mass deployment of smart buildings in your portfolio. So that's really a risk from our perspective. We need to stop doing this one-to-one -one API integrations. But why do we need such a high level of complexity? From my perspective, there's an easy answer. It's the demand of the end user. And I want to show you an example based on the Thinget platform that we um, work with, um, I would say, on a daily basis. It's one of our key partners in Germany that will give you the idea why we see this complexity and the demand from the end user. Here you can see an overview of use cases. And no worries, I will not go into each detail um, because we're all waiting for the lunch break. Um, but let me just share with you one example that's already been discussed during the panel discussion. Let's pick access control. What do an end user expect from access control, smart access control into a building? You want to arrive with your car. The gate opens like magic because it realizes your license plate. You will walk into the front door and it touchless entry. You will be realized that it's you. The elevator brings you to your home floor where you booked your desk or your meeting room for the day. And of course, you want to store your personal belongings in a, lo in a locker. And you want to operate the locker 
with your smartphone. You don't want to use a key or um, a badge or something like this. So with this relatively simple example, you will see that we will need to integrate easily three, four, five different hardware technologies just to achieve this one use case. Thinking further down the line, it's not just the hardware and the APIs. It's the software platform that you need. You need a IT enterprise roles and right management in a software platform, because otherwise you will have a problem to allocate the, the roles and the rights to the end users. And of course, you should have a software that allows for workflows, because sometimes you want to have this adaptive um, use cases, for instance, for short-term visitors that will come into the building just for one day or a few days. So this is where we think um, we, need, we need to focus on, and this is what is required when it comes to the, to the smart building setup. And from a very high-level design standpoint, this is how we structure the smart building projects that we run. Everyone is talking about mobile apps, smartphone apps. We don't think that this is the critical aspect here. Mobile apps are just in front end. Of course, you need a nice UI. You need to control some of the functionalities with your smartphone. But the most critical part from our perspective is in the middle here. This is the building operating system. And this is where we think the, the most critical part of the project lies. In the building operating system, also called BOS, or integration layer, you will need to integrate all the different technologies that you will find in your building, but also the IoT sensor side and the IT side and software platforms that need to be um, controlled by the building operating system. And of course, the goal is to reduce complexity in a project and to use all the available data sources for all the various use cases that you want to achieve in a building, and to have a design that scales on the basis of more buildings and not just one by one for each building. So if we think about how to implement a smart building, of course, you could go to the market and recruit a couple of people, put them on your payroll, and Ultimately, you will find out that this might not be the most efficient and sustainable way. Well, you could say, I will ask my software provider. They can do the integration, no worries. But the software companies typically focus on their software. They want to develop, develop scalable software. They want to build their software as a service model, but they don't want to be stuck with their resources into highly complex projects. Even worse, Ask the hardware manufacturer, and I bet that this will not be a good idea if it comes to software integration. So from our perspective, there's a very good reason why in other complex technology areas, system integrators play a significant role when it comes to the implementation of the technology. And this is also true for smart buildings. If you think about a system integrator, you should have a partner that offers a plan, build, operate approach, a holistic approach that serves you throughout all the life cycle of your project. You need skills in the building side, building automation, but also in the IT enterprise side, and of course, the IoT side. You should have a partner with a proven track record and references, and to add additional value, if you want to uh, scale on a, on a global basis, you should have a partner with global cap uh, capacity to scale globally for you for corporate deployments. And nothing of this would be possible without the customers. And I want to give you a bit of idea of some of the customers that we had the pleasure to work with or that we're currently working with, and it's just a few out of our portfolio. And I hope that this will give you a bit of insight what we do on a daily basis. The first example is Allianz, the Sky Office in Dusseldorf. 
is just one example out of a smart building upgrade project. And here you can see it's done on a properly structured building operating system, connecting the various sensors into the building that will allow the landlord to better understand the performance of each building, people counting, air quality, and others are deployed within these buildings. And it's a very good um, example for retrofit because of the existing building. The second is Unite. Unite is a B2B online retailer based in Germany, formerly called uh, Mercateo. And they developed their new headquarter building. And these guys are up to workspace experience. They want to be the most attractive digital employer in their region. And that's why they heavily invest in smart building technologies and in all these use cases. Smart booking of desks and meeting rooms is just one example. Access control, and of course, we integrate um, fully with the, building operator, with the building management system based on Bucknet IP to do all the um, functions, all the control of the building functions with smartphone apps and automated. And the third example, the Oval in Düsseldorf, is one of the leading smart buildings. It will go live in July. And it offers a variety of use cases. With indoor navigation, for instance, we have sensor-based analytics, access control, and additional features can be onboarded in a modular approach for each tenant. As this is an example driven by a real estate development company, they want to have an open and modular approach for the tenants because it makes perfect sense as they don't know what type of tenants they will attract. And then they can offer quite a selection of use cases that we will deploy. And the fourth and the last example here is the K2 building in Dusseldorf. It's a newly established building that is well known for its green facade and already won some, uh, some building awards, but it was not a smart building. <laughs> and guess what? Um, with a new tenant that is moving in now, we need to do a smart upgrade for the floors that they that they do. We do an upgrade for smart access control, occupancy analytics, and others uh, that they want to operate smart in this very nice building, but without smart features. The list goes on and on, but this is the end of my presentation. And um, yeah, if you want to connect, I will be here during the, the break um, and during the event. And if you want to visit us, you can meet us at our GPA booth on the show floor, or you can connect with me via LinkedIn. That would be highly appreciated. Thanks for your attention and your time.